I'm super pumped, dude. You know what's uh, on the 30 days of coaching now? What? What is it, man? Now we've got, because, okay, what well, we, we promised everybody when we released this, okay, the 30 days of free coaching with Mind Pump, that it would be an evolving project for us, meaning that it's going to continue to get better and better and better and better. And most part, everybody absolutely fucking loved this. And the only thing I ever had people ask us was, hey, where did you know where did you guys get all this information and where are the studies that talk about this? So mm. now we have the studies linked right there for those of our, the nerds and the science people that want to dive in deeper. Yeah, we want to cross-reference this. So you can go into yeah, all the studies. Me. But the 30-day of coaching is absolutely free. The concept behind that was this is how we take somebody through 30 days. If you were privately training with one of us three, it's a collaboration of all three of us, the things that we discuss with our clients, the topics we go over. And then each day you're going to get dripped a specific topic. So for example, day one, you get protein. On the protein, give you some quick bullet points on things that you need to know. Underneath that are episodes that link to the exact minute where we go into depth about that conversation. So if it's a topic you really want to learn about, you can dive through all kinds of content relating to that, plus the studies are on there and an area for you guys to comment on. And you know what? I want to tell people this. Uh, if you make it through the 30 days, which is is awesome. People have been doing this like crazy because, it, again, it's compelling information. You make it to the 30 days. Uh, there's some surprises uh, at the end there. It's really, really cool. Uh -oh. uh, and again, it's it's still free. And I say still because we're bolstering it and bolstering it. I can't imagine. I mean, this thing's going to be so fuck. It's awesome now. I can't believe I can't imagine how awesome it's going to be even a few months or a year from now, which, by the way, once you have access to it, you always have access to it. Um, but I don't know. At some point, it might not be free. But right now, it's still free. So all you do is you go to mindpumpmedia.com and just opt in. That's all you got to do. And you get this information. Do it. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. We're here. We are here at Box and Burn, motherfuckers. Oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I'm so, so excited. So we, Sorry, I had to. we got the what the fur the the part one of a two part series uh, interview, right? First time that we're doing mm. this, actually. What we're gonna what we're gonna do with our boys is we're going to uh, split the episode up. But don't get pissed off; it's gonna drop at the exact same time. This is the first half, and then you're actually gonna go over to the Box and Burn podcast to get the second half. Yeah, we great time. We had a great time talking to Tony Jeffries and Glenn Holmes, both as tough as their names sound. Yes, <laughs> great, great uh, time at the podcast. We were actually the ones being interviewed, um, which doesn't happen too often. But That's we have nice. It's nice. Yeah, we like you know. Yeah. Ask us questions about ourselves. Yeah, can we talk, we can about, talk about our favorite subject for once? Yeah, yeah come on, it's great. Now. Uh, you can. F they have the Boxing Life podcast. Uh, Burning. Uh, Box and Burn Academy. Jesus Christ, Good bro. Lord. This is the first time he's done this. I've never read before. Uh, we have we have the uh, the academy happening at our place at the uh, Mind Pump Media yeah. Studios, right? Where they're doing the certification. Yeah, super pumped. Which is going to be pretty awesome. So you learn how to be able to teach boxing for a workout. It's one of the best certifications I've seen. Yeah, but let's let's talk about why why I think this is so awesome. Because and I remember being a trainer. This is one of the yes. things right away I was drawn to these boys. Was it used to drive me fucking crazy. You see the trainer using the mitts. Like an asshole. Yes. They know nothing about and boxing. I was always, as a trainer, I was always, I wanted to use the mitts, but I was intimidated because I didn't want to be that asshole. Yeah, I didn't, didn't want to be that, that guy, guy. No. teaching boxing when I have no business. Like, I've never been taught boxing. Disrespectful. So I feel like every, every trainer that has ever wanted to teach clients that, th this is a must. They're, they're actually, uh, they, I believe Tony partnered with uh, NASM. If right, I'm not mistaken, yeah. I think that yeah. you do get credit. You get some CEUs, yeah. yeah. You get some credit. So if you're a trainer, you will get some credit with their certification. And it's taught, the, the curriculum is written by boxers, like with high-level skills. So it's not bullshit. So it's legit. It's really, really good. How would someone sign up for this? How would someone get in... So if you want to sign up for that, you go to the boxandburnacademy.com and look on there. And yeah, you're right. We've got CEUs in NASAM, ACE, ISSA, AFAA, is this? Yeah, that one. So, uh, yeah. You, go, you, you, get read, you read like Sal. Yeah. You yeah. read like Sal. Can't you read your own fucking board over there? What's going on? Yeah. What, uh, uh, what, uh, what else are we doing over there? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a one-day certification course where we uh, teach you uh, boxing-specific warm-ups, wrapping hands, and the big thing is, is the mitt work where, like you said, you, we see so many people who haven't got a clue what they're doing, and we really help you with that because boxing is one of the best forms of workouts that you can do. It's an incredible workout. Absolutely. We actually did a video with you uh, on our on Mind Pump TV where you were showing Justin yeah. uh, you know, some some basic techniques and uh, it's quite impressive. That's Obviously, yeah. learning from someone who's world class 
uh, you can tell the attention to, to, to detail and the way you teach, it's a, it's a whole nother level. So without any further ado, you're going to hear uh, Box and Burn actually interviewing Mind Pump. Again, this is the first part of a two-part series. After you're done with this episode, make sure you go to Box and Burn podcast and listen to the second half. Box and so, Life podcast. Sorry, Box and Life podcast. Box and Life podcast. And the second half's the best, so make sure you do go there. <laughs> oh, That's right. He shit. did pick the best. He's like, oh, I'll take the second half. Well, you, guys, you guys were pretty much. You, did there. you guys were pretty <laughs> much shit the first first half hour. <laughs> I wish I had an English yeah. accent. Yes. You, recording? you know how much pussy you get with an English accent? I'm just fake easy. it. No, easy. mate. No, <laughs> mate. I don't know. I'm married. It's easy. It's so easy. How do you know? Just do some... How do you know? Huh? How do you know it's easy? Mm. Listen to you. What do you think? I We've been if I was a woman, I'd bang you. <laughs> just <laughs> listen to you. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a well-known fact. And here, if you have an English accent, it's instant. You're instantly sophisticated. Do you know what, so um, Should we talk about this? On yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. It's not just women who like it. Men like it as well. It makes you with women. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I mean, oh. uh, no. I mean, oh, hey. men like it with men. Like <laughs> yeah, you yeah. guys, like you all stand at me now. Look You're at me right. Yeah. I, I have this weird. I have <laughs> this weird <laughs> thing that's going on in my stomach. You, know, you, you, know you know talk so cool. I, I used to be the same when I was back home and I'd hear an, an American guy talk, or because I, I was into like American bands and stuff and see them live, and then when they talk, I'd be like, whoa. He sounds yeah. cool as yeah. fuck. Really? <laughs> yeah. I thought we sounded like so idiots. Plain. No, you sound yeah. great. Especially yeah. where we're from, we don't get many American people there from the yeah. north of England. Gee, we should go there. You should go there, yeah. It's well, it sounds so good. Sounds yeah, like sure. a reason. It's the opposite, Let's right? Go. Huh? It's yeah. wherever you're at. Wherever you're at, it's the opposite, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the yeah. opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Even, like I said, we're, we're men and people who come to the gym, oh, they're amazed with your accent and they love it and they ask you where you're from and all that. So it's a great... Uh, Especially in this town where networking's massive, you meet loads of people because of your accent. Yeah. Well, I've just done a tweet this morning, actually, because. I get asked all the time, oh, what part of Australia are you from? No. Or, oh, what part of Ireland are you from? Oh, like everything. I've never I'm had sure. one person say, where, oh, you're from Sunderland? Not <laughs> once. <You know? laughs> and the thing, we're, we're Americans as well. I don't know, you, can you agree? Like, they all sound about the same. Americans. Yeah, yeah, there's pretty much like, I'd say four American accents, right? You've got your East Coast, West Coast, the South. North and South. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And in, in England, we always say we, you can travel, like from where I'm from, you can travel 10 minutes and they say a word different. That's an old oh, country, that's why. Wow. Yeah. It's because right. it's an old country. Our, our accents haven't had enough time to develop here. Yeah. Right. You know, when yeah. you go to old countries, you hear that. This I mean, it's so fascinating to me how, how accents develop and grow. It's crazy. It's such a weird thing. So is that is that your theory then? You think that in another two, three, five hundred years, we're going to have like San Jose will be like talk one way. LA will talk another cool. way. No, not Everywhere. moving, not That's, moving forward because the, the world's gotten smaller and people travel so much and hear each other so much on social media and internet. But back, back, if you go back, uh, you know, two, three, four, five hundred years or a thousand years, people didn't move very far. They couldn't. It took a long time to get anywhere. So people developed a way of talking within their communities. And in the old, old countries, you get dialects. So like you go to China, you go to Italy, you go to Greece, you hear different dialects in different regions. Well, trip on this. You guys, do you see what's going on with uh, emojis and what they're what they're talking about predicting in the future with that? That we're actually no. going to go back to looking at like, like images, hieroglyphics. instead wow. of yeah. That's the thing about it. You can put like three it's or four faster. emojis together, yeah. mm -hmm. and when you look at it, you can put together almost a paragraph right. of what you're trying to he, say. He always sends the eggplant one. You know the one that's like <laughs> yeah. every the time. Sausage and one. we know it's right? going eggplant down. Eggplant right? and the yeah. peach, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, he likes his vegetables. Apple's doing it now. So when you type the word and it gives you the remote yes yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what i'm saying yeah. they're pushing that to go that direction so right. you're actually you're already seeing actually companies at start to market this way also so right companies like pizza hut i can't a couple other ones i was reading this article but it's kind of fascinating when you think about it that we may not even like type out words think, or like, anymore it, could it be a trend that is gone again in 10 years no. or is it something that's here you know why think you want to know why you, you want to know why because it feeds right into the this frenzy of downloading and giving your yeah. your brain information at a faster instantly, rate yeah. instantly totally. if it was the other way i would say that or if it was a lateral move mm -hmm. like i'd say oh it could be a trend it'll go away mm -hmm. but because it's it's improving the amount of information that you can download faster than i don't <laughs> <And> language <laughs> language develops wow, right? uh you know over time it develops uh based on the the culture and our culture now is text it's right. internet it's uh the slang has changed mm -hmm. already i have two kids already they say words i'm like what the fuck are you saying <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea yeah. what you're talking about and attention spans are going to look much much shorter now than they were just even 10 years ago like i've said it before but when 
Facebook came out, it was like a big long status. Then I went down to 140 characters on Twitter. Then I, then, <laughs> yeah. then, then I, went, then I went to Instagram, just yeah. fucking pictures. Yeah, then I went even shorter than that on Snapchat where it's just, you're just pressing it. So attention spans. So this here, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Well, and this is also why we see uh, industries like uh, meditation and stuff on a huge rise because that's trying the, to offset it. Exactly, that's yeah, the, the offset to counter right. counter this because right, right. you have no intention span. You're downloading all this information. You're never present. So right. you and and people are starting to put that together. In but, fact, you're seeing uh, things like anxiety and depression start to, are continuing to rise, and mm. they think that's part of it. Yeah, people aren't slowing down. Right. Yeah. Nonstop. We need more float tanks. <laughs> yeah, and then with the with the instantaneous stuff like uh, like Uber now movies. You remember when you used to wait? Remember when you started wait on the to listen to the radio for a song to come on? Yeah, you know you'd be sitting there all day sitting waiting there with the cassette. Did you do that in America yeah. as well? Oh, right. cool. we, we, talk, we talked about this on Mind Pump. I, I remember it, vivid memory, right? I mean, actually, do you remember a song? Like, I'll give you one. Uh, Informer by Snow. I remember. I remember. I remember being a kid, you know, and swimming in our little doughboy pool no with my boombox outside, my tape all ready to go, yeah. and waiting all day for that fucking song to come on. And gets out, like rushing out of the pool, diving across the deck to slide over and hit record. You know, totally yeah. remember. Yeah, but nothing's changed more than porn. Let's be honest. That's that's for sure. I know I bring that up all the time, but that's so drastically different. All the time, every time. Porn was so valuable when we were kids. Do you remember that? Yeah. You get a magazine, a dirty magazine, you were like the man. Yeah, you could yeah, trade yeah. it for anything. Kids would give away their bike for, <laughs> for a dirty magazine. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Today, you couldn't do that. No, no, it's just on your phone instantly as soon as you want it. Well, this, is, this is also- I was watching it earlier. Those same, <laughs> those same kids are getting desynthesized, right? Because now it's like they're having uh, erectile dysfunction at like 30 years old. Right. Earlier, in the 20s. Yeah, wow. 20 years old. Yeah. You see that. You see a huge rise in that Who? right now. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, right? Adam's an expert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I tell you what, uh, that's- fucking sex lives up and what we were talking about on our last podcast was about virtual reality now now they're going to come up with virtual reality porn so now oh, yeah. you're on top of a hot <laughs> chick you know and yeah. you're there hold well, on a second when's this coming out <laughs> <laughs> well we, we got to hold on bro you already got that shit <laughs> Yeah, we got a lady called Holly Randall, who's one of the biggest porn directors in the world. She was telling us all about it on, on the show. And yeah, it's going to come out. So you're there with a, a 10 out of 10 chick every single time. And now you've got to go back to your missus, who's a fucking six or a seven. <laughs> not, not my missus. My missus not my missus. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yourself, yeah. So how's guys, virgins, ever going to get fucking laid? And when they do, how they ever going to be comfortable? Why would it? they want to? You know, we, yeah, exactly. You I mean, because you're right? fucking your hand. Uh, you, you're not actually... <laughs> You're not actually fucking the virtual reality right. thing. What about when, what about when it's a robot? Yeah. 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 Do that again real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you what about when they make the robots well, realistic? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Forget yeah. it then. And we can get real wipes, right? Well, well you know they have that device now where you stick on top, right? The girl on the other end of it during the... the operates it? Yeah, that operates. So she's like has an apparatus. She's sticking up in there and everything, and you're feeling everything. Shit. Yeah. You tried That's that. There. <laughs> it you exists. Tried that. No, I saw it, but I, I haven't yeah, I've yeah, so yet to try. <laughs> sex lives are gonna be ruined, right? Uh, that was my uh, I was looking at your mind pump Instagram the other day when you asked for questions and I seen you got hundreds of questions, people asking you questions. Yeah. And there was questions about everything from postnatal weight loss to creatine to build a muscle to to everything and I, I just made us think, wow, these guys are really smart bastards if you can answer these questions. No, we don't. We <laughs> actually pay someone to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but there wasn't a question on there about how to last longer in bed. <laughs> we don't know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We stick to our wheelhouse, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where do you get... I mean, obviously, you've got some loyal followers and, and loyal supporters because I was reading and everyone was seeing about how well your show is and how much it's helping their, them in their lives. Where do you get all this knowledge from? Because obviously he's a smart bastard. You know, it's from? just it's years and years and years in the industry. Jesus Christ, really? date the fuck out of us. For <laughs> years and years, decades, well, and hey, decades. decades. I've been I've been doing it for twenty years. I was writing it on stone. Yeah. You know, these guys, these guys, well, almost twenty, almost it was fifteen as long. last time. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, twenty for me. He I'm, adds three years yeah, every time I'm we tell well, hey. <laughs> Easily, it's like forty-five years. No. I know I'm thirty-eight, but it's oh, been these forty-five years. I started like I started eighteen years old and thirty-eight years old. That's twenty. You're one year older than me, dude. That's a long time. That's a long time right. in the industry sure. but really when you've been doing it as long as we have and you have a passion for it you can't help but learn a lot all the time and it's right. not on purpose you know um it's not like you go out because uh, i think between the three of us it's not like we've held tons of certifications uh or had lots and lots of formal education we've had what what you need to in order to work uh in this industry but just we just have passions for it so we constantly are learning and it's constantly evolving to you you have to stay on top yes. of what's changing right mm -hmm. and if you're not you're going to get 
left behind. Well, so it's this like is you by, yeah, by nature of problem. being in it, you're yeah. always on top you of it. You see a big problem with that too, yeah. especially in the certification realm. It's like, you know, you, you only get so much from going through these these uh, processes where, you know, I'm learning from a textbook. I'm mm. I'm learning the methods and everything in, in theory, but I haven't put any of this to practice yet. Right. And for us, like we really uh, focused on the experience of it. And then as we went along, we really like sought these other uh, methods and, and decided whether or not they're valid. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what would, you the, what would you say the best way of studying and learning all this stuff is? You know, I wish, I'll tell you what, I wish, because personal training certifications, you know, the academic, they'll give you the information that you want to start with. But I, I, the way I think it should be done is I think there should be an internship. I think you should be an apprentice for a year or so right. because uh, the, the most I ever learned was just on the job, working with people, training others, working with other trainers. And when you're working with clients, if you're really passionate about being a trainer, you really learn a lot about what actually works and not just what works. Here's a big, there's a big difference between what works on paper and what works in real life because in real life you have to take into account is the person going to do it? Are they going to enjoy it? Right. The psychology behind, because I could tell anybody what I know is going to work. Here, mm -hmm. do, do your cardio workout. Here's your diet. Do it and you're going to lose weight and get in shape. But I, I'm not factoring in the psychological component. I'm that's not factoring the, that's in That's the biggest piece, yeah. which is the, the most piece. and the most neglected. I think that's what we all tapped into. Yeah, we, we figured that out. It's like really about the the psychology of the individual coming into the situation right. and how can we steer them, you know, correctly. Well, yeah. we we also, you know, and, and I know Sal's talking about other places, but that's why we created Mind Pump is because we wanted to be that place. Like we wanted to be the place that if you're a trainer or even if you're just someone passionate about fitness and you want to learn and you want to do it in a way that's not uh, like opening a textbook and sitting down and reading it from front to back. Yeah. That's a lot of what we try and provide. You know, you give a little bit of entertainment or, you know, and, and I don't even say, say entertain. I hate saying entertainment because it's not like we, we script anything or we act out or, but we, uh, we give the information the way I would teach it to a client, which is the simplest way I can deliver it to them to get across what they need to know to get to their goals. Right. Instead, and the problem with academia is they're so concerned about who's more right and then they, they almost... They forget. Yeah. And they and the, the message they deliver, only a, a trainer or a, somebody that's really into the science is going to absorb it. And then the rest of the people, it normally turns them off and it just confuses them because there's so many conflicting theories that are out there. I'll give, right. you, I'll give you a great yeah. example of uh, the human psyche and how if you don't take that into account, what you think may work actually backfires. I'll give you a great example. I don't know what town or city this was, but they enacted a law because they were trying to combat obesity. Obesity is a, a huge epidemic in, the, in Western societies. It, it's poised to bankrupt uh, country, America. It's, uh, it's poised to bankrupt us if we don't get a handle on it. And people are educated more than ever on calories. You know, you got to take in less calories than you burn. That's how you lose weight. And so the city said, hey, why don't we make it uh, a rule or a law that all restaurants have to display calories, proteins, fats, uh, and carbs uh, on all their menus. So when you look in the menu or you look in a fast food restaurant, you can see how many calories each thing was. And they thought to themselves, well, this will help because right. now people are more informed. And what they found was that when they put the numbers up, people actually ate more calories. Right. Because this is the human psyche part. Instead of people looking at the Big Mac and then looking at the chicken salad and saying, oh, I'll save, you know what? I should get the chicken salad because it's 200 calories less. What they're doing is saying, holy shit, for only 200 more calories, I can get the Big Mac. So I'm going to get the Big oh, Mac so instead. Reverse, they yeah. justified yeah. it and they found it did the absolute opposite. Now, as trainers who've worked with people for you know years and years and years, we know that part is extremely important. And we understand right. how to communicate what we're trying to get across to get people to get to their goals. And there's a lot of things that are underlying. It's not nearly as simple as they make it sound. Well, yeah. I'd also say that we're probably better communicators than we are even trainers, right? Yeah. I think that's what we probably pride ourselves on is that ability to communicate to her because we made a lot of the same mistakes that a lot of the, the trainers are still making and were making, you know, 10, 15 years ago because we didn't know any better. And a lot of the information that was given to us was biased. You know, the people that dominate the fitness industry in the market right now are, you know, supplement companies and companies that have bias that want you to push this for this reason. And so even the studies that are out there. So if you're even somebody who's looking out for more knowledge and information, it's even tough to know what you're reading is good information. Just because it was published by somebody and mm -hmm. it, you know you think oh it's a study you know these doctors did it it must be right but what you don't know is the behind the scenes of why right. they even ran that study because all they're really trying to do is promote something when really you, you strip everything away you realize it's splitting hairs on what the difference is going to make in your real actual your actual journey and not only that but i'll give you another example we've all heard of uh, low fat we've yes. all heard of low carb right 
Have you ever heard anybody promote and say, hey, you should do a protein fast. You should go low protein for a week or, or for a day or for a few days. Never. Protein powders are among the top selling supplements on the market. They're huge, right? right. There's real benefits to going low protein sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's part of the fasting protocol. If you want to improve uh, this, the, the cell regeneration process, if you want to kill off old cells, avoiding protein along with carbohydrates is one of, one of the best things you could possibly do. This is why fasting, one of the reasons why fasting is so healthy. When but you you'll, assimilate it better too when you reintroduce it. When you so, reintroduce, yeah. absolutely, your body actually becomes desensitized wanna, if you eat protein all the time at high levels, but they'll never tell you that. I just right. want to touch on the fasting thing. What, what have you found to be the most effective uh, what's the word I'm Component for? to it? No, or like um, uh, frequency. Okay. So oh, some see. people say like 30 days. Okay. I've, very, heard, very, I've, I've heard that number coming question. down a little bit more. Like people saying every two weeks, mm -hmm. even less than that now, it's getting so, more and more frequent. Well, so. it's extremely individual. It's very, very individual. So if you have, I'll give you an example. Wait, before you go into your example, sure. one of the things that we always like tell people, because we, we, we wrote a book on, on fasting and we're, we, we talk about it a lot on our show. But one of the things we always preface with is that it's, it's an advanced technique of, of eating. And that sounds weird, right? Because it's not eating. Like, how's, how fucking advanced is that advanced. really, right? Uh, but why, one, why, why it's advanced and so is, you know. and I just had this conversation with an a old friend of mine that I was helping out right now. And he said, you know, I heard you guys, you guys talk a lot about fasting, so I'm going to start fasting. I'm going to fast tomorrow. I'm like, whoa, 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 pump your brakes. Let's first learn about what your body needs before you start just starving it for, you know, 20-something hours. Regardless of what the science says as far as benefits, you have the, the wrong connection with it like you're doing it because you want to lose weight. That's not the reason why you should fast. You should fast for all the other benefits that you're getting from it, like yeah. neurogenesis, like appetite control. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you doing yeah, yeah. There's a there's a whole bunch of them, but that's the reason why you should do it, not because you think it's going to speed up your results. Because then then you have a bad relationship with food. Then you start to connect. Oh, okay, don't eat. This helps me uh, lose weight. Right. Totally. Yeah. Do you know what they call fasting? Uh, a bad relationship with fasting for losing weight? Anorexia. See, right. people, people don't, they don't, they don't make that connection. So, you know, when it comes to fasting, I mean, to your, to your original question in terms of what's the best way to do it, it's very individual. Um, fasting and, and the, the experts on fasting will, will say it is not a stress on the body. And in the, in the past, I've actually made that mistake and said it's a stress on the body and it causes adaptations. Uh, Dr. Valto Longo, who's one of the uh, foremost uh, researchers on the subject, says no. It is simply another operating system for the body, and both of them are essential. Many of the benefits of fasting come from when you eat afterwards. So you lose all these old cells, and then you rebuild them again, and you become more, literally more right. youthful. But here's the deal with fasting. If you are in a high-stressed state, if you are fatigued, if you are a woman, if you have low thyroid or you have hormonal issues, fasting can, in fact, make things a lot worse. So you have to come at you. You want to in, in, use fasting according to how you're, how healthy or how fit uh, your body is and how your body can respond. Men can typically do it more frequently and get better results. Women, if they fast too often or too long, they'll get symptoms of like hair loss, uh, you know, hormonal fluctuations. May, probably because the female body evolved to bear children, and so they, it, it thinks it's starving and it starts to have these kind of stress responses, if you will. So it's very, very individual. Um, but the benefits, the science will say that the benefits of fasting kick in, I think, at 17 or 18 hours or something like that. That's when you really get the benefits it kicks, of it, fasting. They kick in at 12. I typically tell people 17 to 24, but, you know, I know we totally danced around the question as far as like giving you a like I if I'm recommending somebody who has a good relationship with food like we've made it past that like we've been training for a while I feel confident okay how would I teach you yeah. I would give it to you once a week that's it once a week fast that's it you would fast how, once a week yeah how, how wow. like I've thought about trying to fast and incorporate it into what I do but I've kind of come to the conclusion that I'm too active I'm too go, go, go all the time. I need energy in my body. I'm shredding like three, 4,000 calories per day doing what I do. So I just feel like I wouldn't be productive you're, coming out you'd of be a surprised. fast. You'd be very surprised. In fact, yes it was, and no. Right or it, 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 no, I understand what you're saying because it, it could be difficult to get enough calories uh, within a short you know, period of time. I mean, I struggle to get enough calories as it is, like quality <clears throat> calories as it is. Yeah, you're, yeah, I would see that. So um, I would definitely use it judiciously, but you can simply eat within a window, a time window, eight hours, mm -hmm. you know, and then get your calories within that and maybe do it once a week and then you get the benefits of fasting. There's some interesting evidence uh, that is showing, and it's not uh, proven yet, but it's 
showing that there may actually be a better adaptation response to people who fast. So you may actually build muscle or become more fit or whatever at a faster rate if you utilize fasting. Now, if you look at the science behind fasting... Let me make that clear, though, because that sounds confusing when you say it like that. That's like... It's not because you're fasted that you're going to build more muscle. That would be impossible. It's, it's no. the it benefits that you get from it as far as you being more sensitive. Of course. Like, yeah, that, it's not because you actually fasted. And so, so and this is... Like, well, that's why that makes it, sense. It's like resetting your sensitivity yeah. to exactly. protein intake. Exactly. And, exactly. So now your body's going to assimilate it so much better. Okay. Right. But, but like someone like gains you... Or a warrior diet or something like that where, yeah, your, your window's a little bit later in the day. So yeah. you're actually more fasted, yeah, throughout the morning and throughout the afternoon. Right. That I makes don't, sense. I don't, I, I don't recommend it, though, to... If you're like talking to you and listening to what you're saying right now, like I wouldn't recommend it to you. Yeah. It's like maybe when your life slows down more. Exactly. You know That's what I'm saying? I'm like waiting for myself you know, to slow down. And, and or, or, or maybe when right. you when you know like hey you you you've been wanting to try it and you realize like oh shit actually I wasn't very active this week at work and yeah. I overconsumed the last week and hey you know what this would be a great time to do it because you're not you know you I'm sure there's going to be a time in your life when you notice that or a when down you take time a break maybe or when you when you're like a day off from working out or right. maybe when you're on vacation I love I love to fast on vacation I'll go on vacation. And I won't eat until like dinner and have a nice big meal. It's my mm. it's my favorite. Right. And what from that? What do you experience on the other side of that? Coming out of that fast, what do you not? Like, if you could pick like the top three, like maybe mental or physical benefits. That so you mental have, clarity, yeah, inflammation clarity. down. Those are my two. Yeah. The inflammation. Uh, so I had uh, I, I noticed all the things you're supposed to notice, like lower inflammation, mental clarity. Uh, I had um, kind of this like really good clean clear type of energy while I was fasted. Even the first time I did it, I was a eat. I ate seven meals a day for years, years. Mm -hmm. And the first time I did it, I couldn't believe how good I felt when I did it. But really what I got out of it was a psychological benefit because I came from, uh, when I started working out and the way I ate was all dedicated to building muscle. So my relationship to food was like the opposite of somebody who was always overweight. I was always skinny. And so I was terrified of missing a meal or skipping a meal. When I realized that I could skip a meal and not only not lose muscle, but actually have some benefits, it was fucking mind blowing. In fact, I would say that one event is really what started me on a path of, of really questioning everything. Because up until that point, I accepted the dogma. I accepted the eat you know, over one gram of uh, protein per pound of body weight. I accepted the eat small meals throughout the day. I accepted the have protein right after your workout. I accepted all these different things as, as truth. And when I tried fasting for the first time, I said, holy shit, I was wrong about the meals thing. I wonder if the other things are bullshit too. But it's not necessarily that they're, that they're wrong. I think they're tried and, and tested methods. It's just that we're learning new things on top of that, right? It's like me, me personally, I lost, once I stepped up eating to like four or five meals a day, two, every two, three hours, I noticed a, dr- a, a drastic so there's lots well. of, there's lots but, of factors in that that you want to consider that can could cause weight loss but the the meal frequency itself if yeah. all things are being equal and you compare someone who eats 6 meals a day to someone three who eats 3 meals a day and this is by the way has been studied several over and over and it's conclusive there is zero there's zero well, benefit. even the best metabolic rates not through the roof on people that are eating no. much. so what's yeah. more likely is that and just it's the same reason why I still tell people like if I were to go back and compete again I would still go back to my six meals a day yeah. you know why because I'm I'm precise about it I'm tracking it's weighed it's measured it's already ready so people that are you know breaking their meals up four to six times they're just more likely to make better choices. Yeah. You know, that's... Preparation. Yes, because yeah. they're prepared versus somebody who eats two ginormous meals and isn't paying attention and they're just... See, my, my whole thinking when I went through that was just get my metabolism through the roof just so that I'm just constantly... You so know, that you feeds right. That, metabolic that, rate as high as possible, supplement with stuff that's going to increase that. I was constantly on like, what can I possibly do that's going to accelerate fat loss well that's what over and that over feeds again. into the other myth We're right blow your mind that's that one. that yeah. feeds you into, I'm, I'm talking that this was a long time ago yeah yeah right that but that's like, that's, that's, that's a that's a that's a great one that we yeah, all that did. Was <laughs> that's the way we that's, all that's we one all of the that to, yeah that is one of the life. biggest myths in fitness right there it's actually one of the first ones that we tackled yeah. was a small meals myth and the way they sell it is they say you know if your metabolism is a fire you feed it you know all day long and you keep it roaring mm-hmm. and this was and this is what this is what the fitness industry is really good at is they'll take some science and then they'll find a way to twist it so they can sell product 
And so what they did is they looked at the fact that there's a thermic effect that comes from food. So when you eat food, you get a thermic effect. You do get a small amplification in, yeah, in, small. in calorie burn, but it is very small, but yet you do get one. Well, it, but mirrors, the, it mirrors the calories. That that's right. Have. The thermic effect is the same whether you have three meals or you have six meals collectively. So if the food is the same, you get the same therm net thermic effect. There's no difference whether you have small thermic effects or you have two or three large therm thermic effects. There's zero effect on the metabolism. In fact, in healthy individuals, Fasting may, in fact, and I hate saying this because, again, we don't want people to fast for weight loss, but fasting's uh, effects on insulin sensitivity are superior to eating small meals, which for some people who have insulin issues or issues with sugar may, have, in fact, enhance fat loss. Right. I mean, that comes down to what those small meals are, right? Of course. Yeah. Obviously, you Absolutely. Know, in terms of the insulin response. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you think the supplement industry, the fitness industry would promote small meals? Think about it. How many how sell product, right? That's it. And sell small meals. How many take your heart is and get shit. six meals? Totally. You know, if yeah, you, yeah. especially if you haven't Tupperware them all out for totally. yourself, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. You're gonna have two or three bars a day. Yeah. What's your Gonna thoughts on a night. on a cheat meal or a cheat day? So uh, so I don't like that term, uh, a cheat or a meal or day, because it places you Yeah, we call it eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing now, and this is the psychology Being part of, of fitness is it's an all it's an all or nothing approach. It's a, I'm on the wagon, I'm off the wagon. Today it's right. cheat meal, and then the rest of the week is super super strict. Yeah. And that is just long term it, success it, yeah. is poor on that. Now people will say I feel better doing this because I know I'm going to have this cheat meal, and it may be a step closer towards a, a, a way of eating that's long term. But if everything is on or off, then that's how you'll always live your life. Mm -hmm. You'll either be very on or you're going to go off. And yeah. what will happen is you'll have a little bit of something that's off your meal one day. And you'll be like, fuck it. I'm off already. Right. Let's go for it. And you see this yeah. with alcoholics. You see this with drug addicts. And you see this with food. <laughs> I'm, seeing see that, I'm seeing that with ket ketogenic diets too and people stressing about whether they're in ketosis or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. think, and then once they're I'm off, they're finding, like, I'm off. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd like, oh, I, I, will will. Uh, like a sip of wine, knock me out of ketosis or whatever. And I'm just, that was another thing. We, it's so not we, a good way to live on a mentally. Not at all. We uh, we went on a kick maybe like last year sometime. It's been a while uh, when we all went ketogenic and we did it so we could experience it. We could talk about it. And one of the things, and I remember Sal loved it. In fact, he eats really close to a ketogenic diet most, most of the time, time. Most of the time. And I went through it and I, I got a, I felt amazing. And because we expressed it on the show, all of a sudden we had this huge wave of people who were like, keto, keto, keto. And we're like, whoa, pump the brakes. This is not the official diet of Mind Pump. We're just sharing with you guys some of the benefits that we noticed when we were on it. So that's the thing that you got to be very careful is it's, it's crazy how bad everybody wants to be put in a box, you know? It's like, no, we're trying to teach you that there's, there's health benefits to yeah. it. You well, know? That, that's right. what you should focus on is there's a lot of research and there's a lot of health behind that diet. However, you know, how sustainable is it for you uh, with your choices that you're already making right now, eating wise? And so yeah. if it's like completely different from what you're doing right now, like you have to consider that, like you're, you're going to a full extreme and, and is that going to be, able, are you going to be able to, uh, is that going to last uh, day to day what for you? The, what is the keto diet? Tell me. Well, so it. the medical keto diet is something like 80% uh, no, or 85%. Yeah, ninety four percent. A super super high 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 fat, uh, right. very moderate to low protein, and an extremely low uh, carbohydrates, and that's the medical version of the keto diet. And it was originally developed to treat neurological disorders, in particular epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And what they found was there was a doctor, long time ago, who found that when he fasted children with epilepsy because it was uncurable at the time, or there was no treatments, that their seizures reduced in number or were eliminated completely. And uh, they couldn't figure out why. And later on, we figured it was because they were going into ketosis because they had no food. So then he, there was a, uh, they put them on a very high-fat diet with very low carbohydrates and a little bit of protein. And their bodies operated on ketones. And ketones seem to suppress uh, lots of these effects of, uh, of epilepsy. So it's, it was one of the first treatments for epilepsy. We now find see that ketogenic dieting has lots of neurological benefits for people with uh, MA, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, you know, Alzheimer's, people who operate on ketones with Alzheimer's seem to have improved cognitive function, probably because the brain loses its ability to utilize glucose um, like it normally would. In fact, many of these disorders may be forms of diabetes. In fact, I think Alzheimer's has been called type 3 diabetes. Mm, wow. So that's, that's what the medical ketogenic diet is. But you have these versions of ketogenic diets like in our field of fitness well, it's become trendy now it's become trendy and it's, it's higher protein you know so there'll be more like atkins or modified atkins 
Uh, and you, here's what you want to consider. There are definite polymorphisms where a ketogenic diet will not only not work, will be, but it will be absolutely horrible. You have some individuals, you put them on a keto diet, and you do it right, and you do everything perfect, and their blood lipid levels just become horrible, and they get lots of inflammation. And so that's one of the main reasons why we say you don't want to stick, stay within a camp. Now, there's general rules in terms of what is healthy and what's not healthy, but on an individual var- uh, basis, the variances can be dramatic. You can have two people... And a healthy diet for one person can be vegan, and on the next person it can be paleo. Yeah. And and if you switch them around, you have horrible, horrible results. This is why we like people that are giving out information. Like I don't know if you guys are familiar with Rob Wolf or whatever. He just wrote a book yeah. called Wired to Eat. You know, and we're starting to put this together, which is silly that we're just now putting this really together. That I mean, it depends where this person came from, and that's probably the reason why keto works for this person and not for another is because, you know, your ancestry matters. You know, where you came from, so where you live for a majority, and that's what we're uh, what people aren't thinking about when they do. They're hopping on just because it's a trend, right? And Mm -hmm. people don't even realize. Or I shouldn't say people. I don't. That's an overgeneralization. A lot of people don't understand what they're supposed to get from that. And when I talk to someone that's going through ketogenic diet. I'm trying to help them connect the way they feel when they have eliminated a lot of these carbs, right. you know, and sugar and processed foods. And up their fats. Yeah, and upped up their, yeah. up their healthy it's, fats. It's interesting what you said about where people are from. Like ancestry is huge, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the main things that comes up when people talk about gluten and lactose intolerance. Oh, like yeah, for, absolutely. for me, I, we, we grew up like on milk as kids and, you know, it was like, and then I'd never even heard of lactose intolerance. Yeah until i don't know even if, like five six years well, ago and now it seems like everyone i talk to over here is like lactose intolerant right. and i'm like and, and, and i'm always skeptical in my head i'm like are you really lactose intolerant <laughs> yeah, or are you just saying right. that because yeah. it's fashionable to say it <laughs> yeah, yeah. but i think people probably are and i think it's probably because of where they've grown up and the the culture we're, and lifestyle and climate and that here. kind of stuff <laughs> <laughs> no well northern europeans have uh they domesticated cows and used milk um uh, a long time ago, and so the uh, it became very advantageous uh, for people of Northern European cultures to uh, evolve and develop genes that had them uh, be able to digest the lactose that's found in dairy. Now, all of us can digest lactose, or most people can digest lactose as babies, but we lose that ability. But Northern Europeans, a much higher percentage of them, maintain that as they get older. As you go further south in Europe, it becomes less and less. In Africa, it's very low. Uh, in Asia, it's very, very low. So lactose intolerance is quite high in those countries. But in Africa, there is one region where they have a very, very uh, high uh, ability to digest lactose. And in fact, when they study them, they find that they have a different gene that allows them to digest lactose. So it happened through different pathways, but they evolved the same gene. And this is because this particular region had also domesticated cows a long time ago. Right. Wh- why, are we there? Wh- why I'm laughing now is like, Remember what I asked you at the beginning about being a smart bastard? <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck did you find all that? It's, it's all about random. Africa, yeah. Eh? yeah, yeah. It just it's, pops it's out randomly. Got a which, which region memory. in Africa? Oh, no, where do you find that? Um, the region in Africa. Where? Yeah, no, I read that. Uh, God, I don't remember where. I think I read that in. Um, I want to say National Geographic. I can't remember, but I, I did read that a while ago about the differences between the you know the how lactose is a great example because it's such a clean and cl- you know clean cut and dry. Lactose intolerant or not lactose intolerant, yeah. and the differences between the different regions of the world. But uh, I, I don't know if it was this article, but there was another article where I read about the, if you look at the Native American population in America, for example, um, or Hispanic uh, population, they have a much higher rate of uh, diabetes if they eat the Western diet than, than other people. Anglo, Anglo-Americans, for example, don't have as high a rate of type 2 diabetes. And they think it was because Native Americans were hunter-gatherers for longer periods of time, and they didn't have access to tons of starches and carbohydrates, whereas the Europeans with agriculture were eating things like wheat uh, for long, you know, so right. their bodies just just didn't respond as well to you know all those starches. That's so interesting. That's amazing that you can remember all that shit. Yeah, I don't you know? know. Maybe I made it up. So it might be. <laughs> <laughs> brainwashing us into when eating. you when you read stuff like that, uh, what makes you so sure of it? By who wrote it? Um, uh, you know, I just read the science and the studies, but you know, it's well, a good. That's a good. I'm glad you said that. That's because, a very good question. Yeah, because science, uh, when especially when it comes to nutrition. 
many, many times is countered by other studies. Mm -hmm. uh, well, many, many times. Well, and I think to answer that, what we I think we all have a habit of doing is no matter what we read, where we read it, we always search uh, right afterwards. I'm going to search the, the opposite end. side, yeah, exactly. whoever opposes it. Right. And that's and I, I think I you wish have, that would happen in politics. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no. I feel like we talk about this too. Yeah, like, I feel like you should have to do that. I have so much more respect for somebody like uh, we were at. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Paul Check is. We recently went up to the Heaven House. Amazing and brilliant man. And one of the things I was most impressed with was his library was insane. And what was so insane about it was the, all the different, like, uh, like opposing arguments, like thing, ideologies that didn't even match that would, you know, if you were a part of that, you'd be talking shit. But he's w read them all, you know. Oh. And so I just have a lot of respect for somebody who's done that because I feel like even some of the smartest minds that we meet, uh, they get they get they drink their own juice and they get so caught up in their own dogma. Yeah, they get they have well, blinders. It sharpens your own argument well, too well, if you know the other side to that level, right? Because right? yeah. then you could speak, you know, from what from their perspective as well. And right? you have to consider too that uh, ideologies, especially if they're if they've been around for a long time in in, in old cultures, they there's uh, many times truth in a lot of them. Like if you look at Western medicine and Eastern medicine, they seem like. They're, they couldn't exist in the same universe, right? Western medicine, completely different from Eastern medicine. But that's because they both do what they do quite well. Western medicine is unparalleled in its ability to treat acute conditions. You have an infection, you want to go to a Western medicine doctor. You don't want to go, you know, if you have a, if you break a bone or if you need surgery, you want to go to Western medicine. If you have a chronic condition, long-term chronic condition, you're probably going to do better off going to Eastern medicine because when you go to a Western medicine doctor, he's going to give you a pill mm. to treat the symptom, mm -hmm. whereas Eastern medicine doctor is going to look at you and say, okay, how are you eating? How are you sleeping? The root of this? Tell me yeah. about your energy and right. all these different things. So in reality, they're complementary. And this is when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to fitness, you look at all these different methodologies with exercise, kettlebells, mace bells, barbells, you've got machines, cables, bands, you've got body weight exercise, you've got training in circuit fashion, you know, straight strength you know, fashion, different rep ranges, and every camp says that they're the best. The reality is they've all got something all got that's good. Place, right? And if right. you go in with an open mind, you can start to see what they do very, very well, and you come out much more uh, with a much better whole mm -hmm. approach and a better appreciation for when people have an opinion on something because you yeah. can you say maybe there's something to it yeah do you three ever disagree all the time every day really all the yeah. fucking time oh i'd love it, to say that yeah. <laughs> this is the end of the first half of the interview to hear the second half go to the box in life podcast on itunes stitcher radio soundcloud and other podcasting apps that's box in life b-o-x apostrophe n l-i-f-e thank you for listening to mind pump if your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.